Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, looking at the old Hillbilly Homestead Sundown on April the 11th, 2021. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the new year. And we are yet still early and the sun is just now starting to make its shadow on the sundown. But what I plan to do is track this throughout the day. We're supposed to have a sunny day and as we go throughout the day you'll see the shadow progress across the sundown lord willing and we'll be telling you how the lord's calendar works in conjunction with the sundown in other words how they did it back in the old days before they had computers and stuff how they actually knew what season that they were in and by the time we get to the end of this video if i do a good job you'll know how our father's sacred calendar works how the feast days are determined, how the new year is determined, and how you use a sundial in conjunction with the sacred calendar, and maybe even be ready to build your own sundial. So stay tuned. Now, the first thing we need to do is establish how the sacred calendar works, the Hebrew calendar, our father's calendar. And it is nothing like the calendar that we're used to. In fact, you will only start to understand the Hebrew calendar when you learn to separate it from the Gregorian calendar. In other words, you have to completely ignore everything about the Gregorian calendar or it will keep you confused and you will have a very hard time understanding the Father's calendar. The Gregorian calendar or the calendar that we're used to is a completely man-made calendar. It is man's creation. But if you want to understand our father's creation, if you want to understand his calendar, you have to come to the book of Enoch. It is the only scriptural document that tells us how the father's sacred calendar works. Enoch was Noah's great granddaddy, born during the time of the fallen angels. Well, while the fallen angels were down with Cain's children teaching them, the righteous angels were teaching Enoch. And one of the things they taught him was the luminaries. It is all the way up in chapter 71 or in chapter 72, depending on what translation that you're using, that you see the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. Again, this is the only book in all of scripture that tells you how the sacred calendar works. And I believe that's one of the reasons why Enoch was not included in our Bible. I mean, how many people will be following the man-made calendar when they understood our father's sacred calendar? So in order for man to establish his own calendar, he had to hide the information related to the father's sacred calendar. But our father knew this. In fact, Enoch knew this. When you go back to the very first verses in the book of Enoch, it says that it is the word of the blessing of Enoch, how he blessed the elect and the righteous who were to exist in the time of trouble. Talking about this time that we live in now, it's like the father knew that people would start to embrace the book of Enoch during the time of the tribulation. This is confirmed over in the New Testament book called Jude in verses 14 and 16 when he quoted the book of Enoch and the end time scenarios. You see right here in verse 14 where it says, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. That's actually talking about the day of the Lord that we read about in Revelation chapter 6. Well, that was the book of Jude, like I said, which is found in the New Testament. But when you come over to the book of Enoch, you see that that is a quotation of the entire chapter 2 of the book of Enoch. But anyway, I only offer up that information for the incredulous. Those that have discernment, those that read the Father's scripture in its entirety, have no problem recognizing the legitimacy of the book of Enoch. So let's go on. Okay, so we're back up here in chapter 71. Again, this is the beginning of the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. 
according to their respective classes, their respective powers, their respective periods, their respective names, the places where they commence their progress and their respective months, which Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, explained to me, he who conducts them. So now that's Enoch explaining the source of his information. He wasn't just making stuff up or writing based on his own observation. He was actually taught by Uriel, who, as we read here, is in charge of conducting the luminaries. So Enoch got this information firsthand. That's what Genesis chapter 5 and verse 22 is saying when it says Enoch walked with God. When you look back at the Hebrew, you see that it says that Enoch walked with the Elohim, which we know now is referring to all beings in the spirit world, including the angels and the angel Uriel. You see back over here in 71, it says that Enoch was told the whole account of them, talking about the luminaries, according to every year of the world forever until the new work which shall be effected which will be eternal. In other words, what we're about to see here is how the Father's sacred calendar works, at least until the entire earth is burned up in flames. So let's see what he says. In verse two, he's talking about the first law of the luminaries. Now, this verse is important for a lot of people, especially people who don't understand when our Father's sacred day works. Again, we have to separate ourselves from Gregorian calendar, which says that the 24 hour period that we call the day starts at midnight or at some other arbitrary time. Well, we see over here, according to Enoch, it says that the day starts at sunset. It reads the first law of the luminaries, the sun and the light arrives at the gates of heaven, which are on the east and on the west of it at the western gates of heaven. Now, I have to admit, a lot of people get confused in this verse by how the phrases which are on the east and on the west is placed in this sentence. But when you read it carefully, minding your grammar, you see that what it is actually saying is that the sun and the light arrive at the western gates of heaven and of course it is in the west that the sun sets so what this is saying is that the first law of the luminaries is that the sun sets not the sun rises but that the sun sets this is one of the ways that we know that the day begins at sunset now most people who are observant won't need this level of instruction They'll get it a lot sooner than the others, especially when you think about how sunset is the only time of the day when the majority of the people on the planet are awake. Not everybody is awake at midnight and not everybody is awake at sunrise. I know I missed sunrise this morning. Well, unless you are sick or work in the night shift, chances are you will be awake and fully alert at sunset every day but anyway you can see several classes that we did on that subject it is important for us to understand that the day begins at sunset when we're thinking about the first day of the year because it too will begin at sunset but let's go on now in verse 4 we start to hear about these gates in some translations it's referred to as portals and we see that the moon, as well as the sun, goes through these six portals throughout the year. So let's try to get our understanding of these gates, because it too is important in the reckoning of the year. We see down in verse 9, when it's talking about the sun, it says that in the same manner, it goes forth in the first month by the great gate. So it's going to tell us when the first month is. Again, this is the only scripture that tells us how the sacred calendar works. So if we want to know when the first month is, we have to look at verse 10, which says, it goes forth through the fourth 
of the six gates, which are at the rising of the sun. So in other words, the first month, talking about the solar year, we're talking about the sun here. We haven't gotten into the month yet. We see that the first month, according to the solar year, is when it enters the fourth gate. So let's go back over to the sundial and let's try to see what it's talking about. All right, now, if you pay attention to the way the sun transverses the sky during the year, you know that it is not in the same position. In the wintertime, the sun is really low in the sky. And in the summertime, the sun is really high in the sky. Well, that's what Enoch is talking about when he's talking about these portals. And we can see that when we have a sundial set up like this one, which is an equatorial sundial, what Enoch is saying about the portals is that in the first month, the sun will enter what's known as the fourth portal. Now, we're going to see here at the beginning of the month would be when the sun starts to enter that fourth gate. And throughout the month, with this portion here being the fourth gate, and this portion being the fifth gate, and this one being the sixth gate, what you'll see at the beginning of the month is that if this wooden pole was a shadow, it would enter the fourth portal at the beginning of the month, and at high noon each day, the shadow would continue to get longer and longer until finally it reached the fifth portal. It takes exactly 30 days before it enters the fifth portal where it stays in the fifth gate for exactly 30 days before it enters the sixth gate. And on the 31st day after it enters the sixth gate, we're going to see here in the text the summer solstice where the sun is the highest in the sky. And then the shadow will start to get smaller and smaller again. Going back into the fifth gate, where it'll stay there for another 30 days. And then it'll go back into the fourth gate, where it'll be for another 30 days before the sun will cross the equator again. And then the sun would enter the third gate. And just like before, if you tracked it every day, the sun would spend 30 days in this portal, the third gate, before it goes into the second gate, 30 days, then the first gate for 30 days until you get somewhere around the winter solstice, where the sun is the lowest in the sky, and then the high noon shadow will start to decrease again until it eventually gets back to the first month where it'll go into the fourth gate. So let's come back over to the book of Enoch and see how this looks on paper. In verse 10, we see there are six gates total. And the fourth is the first gate of the year. In verse 11, we see that the first month of the year is in which the sun and the moon goes through that fourth gate. We'll come back to verse 11 and how it's talking about the sun and the moon going through that gate. That's how we're going to know the first day of the month. It'll take two witnesses to declare the first day of the month, both the sun and the moon. But when we go on to verse 12, we start to learn about these gates. We're only talking about the first month here still. But see how it says that the sun goes through the fourth gate for 30 days. For anybody that's really observant and know that the sun will cross the equinox twice in a year, verse 13 clarifies which equinox is talking about when it says that the day is lengthened from the day and the night is curtailed from the night for 30 days. What that is saying is that the first lunar month begins with the equinox in which the days are getting longer and the nights are getting shorter. That's the difference between the spring equinox and the fall equinox. In the fall equinox, of course, 
the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer. In verse 15, we see that after those 30 days that the sun enters the fifth gate and stays there for 30 days. Verse 16 says that the nights are still getting shorter and the days are still getting longer. And then in verse 17, you see the sun enters the sixth gate and it stays there for 31 days. And then you see in verse 19 that it says after it reaches that sixth gate, that the days start to get shorter and the nights start to get longer. We know that to occur only at the summer solstice. In verse 20, you see that the next month, which would be the fourth month, that the sun is still in the sixth gate, where it stays there for 30 days, with the days getting shorter than the nights. And then in verse 22, you see that after those 30 days, the sun goes back into the fifth gate, where it stays for 30 days. And then in verse 24, you see it rises again in the fourth gate for 31 days. So you have 30, 30, and 31 days, and then 30, 30, and 31 days. And it continues in that pattern throughout the year, making 364 days. In verse 25, you see it starts to talk about the fall equinox when the days and the nights are equal and the nights are still getting longer. And you see in verse 26 that it enters the third gate where it stays there for 30 days. And down in verse 28, you see that after those 30 days, it enters the second gate where it stays for 30 days until in verse 31, it enters the first gate where it stay there for 31 days. And just like in the sixth gate, it spends two months inside of that portal before in verse 39, you see it enters back into the second gate where it'll stay for 30 days before it goes into the third gate in verse 41 and spend 31 days. And that is the complete cycle of the year. You see the exact timing of the end of the year in verse 42, where it says that on that exact night, when the days and the nights are equal, is the 364th day of the year. That is the spring equinox. And that is how the calendar is calibrated every year. The spring equinox is the 364th day of the year. And the day after the spring equinox is the first day of the solar year. And if we jump over to the book of Jubilees, which was written by Moses, we can see that he quoted Enoch as well in chapter six, down in about verse 32, when he too is talking about how the year has 364 days. Of course, our father knows that the year is actually 365.25 days. But in order for us to calibrate the calendar every year, he has trained us through the scripture to reset the calendar every year at 364 days. And the purpose for that is to keep the seasons aligned according to the spring equinox. As it turns out, the earth has what's called a procession. And when you transverse through time, you'll notice that the equinox doesn't fall on the same day every year. In fact, if you go so many thousands of years into the future, the spring equinox will be falling in September and the fall equinox will be falling in March and the seasons will be completely backwards. Well, in order to prevent that, our father in his infinite wisdom had us to calibrate the year at 364 days. And with that calibration, no matter how the earth proceeds, our calendar will always be accurate and our seasons will always be aligned only if you keep up with the 364 days. Well, that's what Moses was saying over in chapter six and verse 32, where he says, and command thou the children of Israel 
that they observe the years according to the reckoning 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony and they will not leave out any day nor disturb the feast. And that brings me to the feast day calendar, which we have addressed in other classes, how the calendar used by the Jewish community is a fixed calendar. In other words, they don't go by the 364 day year, which will change over time. They go by a calculation or an equation and their calendar is fixed. That's why in the year 2021, they declared the feast days a month too early. That's what Moses was saying that the commandment for the children of Israel to reckon the year at 364 days so that their feast days won't be lost. And we will celebrate our feast days in the correct month. Again, the year 2021, like the year 2013, is a good example of that. If you don't follow the calendar in this manner, you will be celebrating the feast days in the wrong month. You see in verse 33 that it says that if you don't observe the 364 days according to our Father's commandment, he says that your seasons and the years will be dislodged. Well, the Jewish community's feast days are dislodged for the year 2021, but we'll cover that in other classes. What I wanted to point out here is how it goes on to say that those who do not mind the calendar according to this method will forget the new moons. And you can see that in the other man-made calendars that you will view on YouTube, where they don't bother to pay attention to the position of the moon when they declare their feast days at all. They have forgotten the new moons. And by doing so, they have lost their seasons and they are celebrating their Sabbath days on the wrong days. You see over in Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 19, that our Father intended for us to use not only the sun to calibrate our year, but we were supposed to use the moon as well as the stars to understand his complete timing of the year. He even goes on to remind us that the day starts in the evening in verse 19, when he says "And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. But now you can come back to the book of Jubilees and you'll see that it just won't be that they'll be celebrating the feast days in the wrong month when they don't calibrate the year according to the method described in Enoch. But it goes on in verse 35. It says that they will forget the Feast of the Covenant. Did you know that there was a Feast of the Covenant? Probably not. It's because most of humanity has forgotten the Feast of the Covenant. And we now walk according to the Feast of the Gentiles. And after their era and after their ignorance, this is the result of following the Gregorian calendar. That is the purpose of the Gregorian calendar. It is a calendar of the Feast of the Gentiles. That's why you see their holidays on it, like Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, and the other Feast of the Gentiles. Then Moses goes on to talk about those who only observe the moon and don't observe the sun. We've been talking about those that ignore the moon, but then there are those who only go by the moon and you see them described in verse 36, where it says that their years will come in 10 days too soon. Well, that's what you have in the Muslim community and their feast of Ramadan. When you look at its schedule, you'll see that that festival, which was supposed to be similar to one of our father's festival, actually falls 10 days earlier each year. In 2021, they will celebrate on April the 13th, and I probably should have did a class on that, 
Maybe I will. But anyway, when you look in the following year, they'll be celebrating that feast day on April the 2nd, 10 days earlier. That's what Moses was talking about in verse 36. If you don't reckon the year according to the way Enoch is describing it, you'll be celebrating Passover in that manner as well, 10 days earlier each year. And like in verse 37, it says, for this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day. These people are celebrating holy festivals on unholy days. So I hope you see the importance of following the calendar in this manner and understand the reason why I'm spending so much time helping you to understand how it really works. So that one day, if and when the internet is shut down, you will be able to celebrate the feast days on the correct day. So let's go back over to the sundial and the book of Enoch, and let's see how this all works. So now when we look at verse 42 and 43 from the book of Enoch, his book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven, we see that the 364th day is precisely when the days and the nights become equal. And at timeanddate.com, we can verify that this occurs on or about the spring equinox. So now we really only need to know when is the first day. And for that, we have to go to the very next chapter of the book of Enoch to understand the second law of the luminaries, which is in relationship to the inferior luminary that we know as the moon. It is the sun that determines the head of the year, but it is the moon that determines the head of the month. So we have to understand the courses of the moon to understand when the first day of the year is. And for that, we can jump down to verse five, where it says, and at the time it appears, and becomes to you the beginning of the month. This is one of the verses that shows us that the new month starts with the new moon. It starts as the moon appears. That first sliver of the moon is the beginning of the month. There's a lot of controversy over this as there are a lot of people who, with the absence of the book of Enoch, and the truth about the sacred calendar within, they can just make it up their self. And they'll try to argue that the new month starts with the full moon instead. Some will even go as far as to say that the new moon is a full moon. But when you look closely at verse 7 of the book of Enoch, it's telling us when the month starts is telling us how the month starts in great detail. It says, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with it, receiving a half portion of its light. Well, of course, you know that when the sun and the moon are in the same position of the sky, the moon is going to be almost completely without illumination. And in verse eight, you see that it starts to receive its light where it says at that time, when it commences its period, precisely to the day of the month, the moon sets with the sun. That word commence means to begin or to start. It's telling us that the beginning of the lunation starts with the new moon, when the sun and the moon are in the same position of the sky, not on the full moon when they are on the opposite ends of the sky. And verse 9 is still talking about the beginning of the month and how on the day that the new moon will be sighted in the evening, that morning it will rise with a seventh portion of its light precisely. In other words, that small sliver of the moon will start to be seen that morning and will be verified only after the sun goes down when the declaration will be made that we have entered a new month. 
to summarize how the sacred calendar works using the sundial and the information we got from Enoch. We have our one witness, which is the sun, and the fact that the shadow of the sun will be cast somewhere in the fourth portal or the fourth gate, then all we need to see is the second witness, which is the new moon, to know the exact timing of the first day of the month. In other words, when the shadow of the sun is cast somewhere in this gate and we get a new moon, then we know that when that sliver of the moon is sighted is the very beginning of the first day of the first month on the sacred calendar. And that's how they have done it for thousands of years. Before they had calculators, before they had computers or equations, or people who wanted to create their own calendars as such, you can see written in the scripture how they had sundials and they would have used those sundials in this method in order to tell what season they were in and they would know exactly when the first day of the first month was and from that they would know when the feast days would be. So with that, let's go find out when we'll get that second witness, the new moon. Now, for some of you guys, I realize this is highly technical and a few of you don't understand. But remembering a wise statement that I learned back there in engineering school, which says that you don't really understand a thing until you can explain it to your grandmother. Well, the way I would explain this to my grandmother is that the first day of the year begins with the first new moon after the spring equinox. And it is as simple as that. So let's come over to timeanddate.com and we can see when that date is. Now, of course, the proper way to determine the new moon is by observation, not by calculation or equation. But like we try to do every month, we go out and view the new moon for ourselves. Well, one thing those equations and computations and calculations do do for us is they give us a good idea on what day we are to go out there and watch for the new moon. So let me show you how this works and how we determine the first day of the year. So we're here at timeanddate.com looking at the moon calculator and we're looking in the month of March. You always want to start at the spring equinox and start looking for the next new moon. Like we said, the first day of the year starts with the new moon after the spring equinox. And since now the spring equinox is falling in March, we'll come over to timeanddate.com in their moon calculator and look in the month of March to see when the new moon would occur. And what we see is that the 0% moon fell on March the 13th in the year 2021. Now, that's clearly before the spring equinox of March the 20th. So that's obviously not the first day of the year. What that is, is the first day of the last month of last year. And I remind you guys, this is why it's important to understand how to do this, because the fixed Jewish calendar actually declared that new moon as the first day of the year. And that's precisely why many people celebrated the Feast of Passover a month too early. But anyway, we know that's not the head of the year. And since there are no more new moons in the month of March, Let's go on to April to find the first new moon after the spring equinox. And as we're scrolling down through here, we see that the 0% moon would be on April the 12th. But we have to be really careful here because man declares the new moon when it is 0% illuminated. That's why you see that he declares the new moon at 5.30 a.m. But if you remember that during the new moon, the sun and the moon rises together. 
So you could imagine trying to look through all of that sunlight to see that fine sliver of the moon. You wouldn't be able to see it, even if it was in the sky at 530 a.m. in the morning, which it is not. Never do we have a sunrise at 530 a.m. So during that time, it is completely dark outside with no moon in the sky to see whatsoever. No, we have to remember what Enoch said when it came to the first day of the month is that it starts when the moon appears. We have to actually see it and be able to lay eyes on it. In fact, that's how the Levites and the priests did it in days of old is they would send those Levites out to verify the sighting of the moon. And when they saw it, they would blow the trumpets to let everybody know that the moon had appeared. That's what Psalms 81 and 3 is talking about when it says blow the trumpets in the new moon. That was their way of letting the community know that a new month had started. Once they saw that small sliver of the moon appear in the sky, they would start blowing the trumpets, indicating that a new month had started. So we have to be careful here because calendar on your wall, if it tells you the date of the new moon, is actually going to tell you the date of the 12th of April, but that is actually too early. If you went out there on the 12th of April, you won't see any of the moon illuminated. You actually have to go out there on the 13th of April, which will be the very first time that you will see the moon illuminated at 1.7%. And you will only see that 1.7% immediately after the sun goes down. And we learned in chapter 71 that the first law of the luminaries was that the days start at sunset. So we know that when that sliver of the moon appears right after sunset on the 13th day of April in the year 2021, we will be precisely at the moment when the first day of the new year has started. Now, just for an analogy, you remember that man celebrates his new year at 12 a.m. and he'll wait to 12 a.m. on December the 31st to start celebrating his new year. Well, if we did so in a similar manner, we would be waiting till sunset on the 13th to start celebrating our new year and we would celebrate until the evening of the 14th. So actually the 14th is the first day of the new year in the year 2021. And just as an aside note, for those who will still yet try to say that the day starts with the sunrise instead of the sunset, well, I will ask you if the 14th is New Year's, then when is New Year's Eve? Obviously on the 13th. Well, that's the way it works every day. The eve of the day always starts the evening before. So even though the first day of the month is the 14th of April, that day would have actually began on the eve, which would have been at sunset on the 13th. Now, I know this is very easy to understand for most of you guys, but there are a few people who still yet want to be confused for some reason. It almost seems like they're trying to trick us by making us fail to understand when the proper day starts and when the proper month starts and even when the proper year starts. Well, to that, I say to the righteous, righteousness seems seemingly, but to the deceiver, deception. But anyway, let's go on because many of you will only get to see this video after the 14th of April in the year 2021. So let's see when the beginning of the year is in 2022, just for practice. And again, we'll go to March of the year 2022 and start looking for the first new moon after the spring equinox. And we see there is a new moon on the 2nd of March. And of course, that one would be too early. And there are no more new moons in the month of March. So once again, the first new moon after the spring equinox will be in April. And we see it would be after April the 1st. 
And like I said, we have to be careful because man's new moon is different than our father's new moon, which has to be seen. Man's new moon is a 0% moon that he really doesn't have to see on the first. Well, our father's people would actually go out on the 2nd of April and they will see a 1.5% moon illuminated. They will start to blow the trumpets to let everybody know that April the 3rd is the first day of the new year for the year 2022. And of course, the eve of that day will start at sunset on the 2nd. And so for grins and giggles, let's do it one more time. Starting in March of 2023 and looking for the new moon that will fall after the spring equinox. And we see that there is a new moon on March the 21st. And seeing that date, March the 21st, on their calendar, many of our father's people will go out to see the moon on the 22nd. But it would only be 7% illuminated, so they really won't get to see it on the 7th. Then they'll go back out on the 23rd, where they'll see a 4% moon illuminated. They will start to blow the trumpets, declaring the 24th of March, the first day of the first month in the year 2023. And that's how it all works. So it's all really, really simple when it comes to understanding the first day of the year, it begins with the first new moon that appears after the spring equinox. And from that information, you can start to calculate the feast days like Passover and Unleavened Bread, which we'll cover in other classes. So make sure you have your subscription button pushed so you can see when those classes come out. If you have any questions on this, please put them down in the comment section of the video. If you have questions, maybe somebody else has those same questions and we'll be glad to answer them. And please push the like button and shalom.